Okay, it's finally time to talk about the levi chivita symbols. Of course, the levi chivita symbols are tensors, so it would be more appropriate to call them tensors. And I've been really looking forward to talking about this, about these objects, even though this lecture will be quite short, just to mention the name levi chivita. He was one of the co-founders of the subject of tensor calculus. At the time, he and his teacher, Ritchie, called it the absolute differential calculus. Why absolute? Because it didn't matter which coordinate system you chose. And a number of things are named after Ritchie. Ritchie tensor, Ritchie flow, so it's only appropriate that something quite beautiful is named after Levi Civita. Levi Civita was a great mathematician and a great geometer, uh, and I'm just very happy that he had something named after him, and I really encourage everybody to check out his biography. It was, here's how the Levi Civita symbol is formed. So we talked about the permutation symbol, I, J, K. This truly is just a symbol. It's not a tensor. But it's a relative tensor. It's a relative tensor of weight negative 1. And we also know that the determinant of the covariant metric tensor is a relative term is a relative invariant of weight negative two, and its square root is a relative tensor of weight negative one. So this is a relative tensor of weight negative one, and this is a relative tensor of weight negative one. So if we were to divide one by the other, we'll have a relative tensor of weight zero. In other, word, it's, in other words, it'll be an absolute tensor. It'll be a tensor. It'll be a tensor in the sense, as we've been discussing tensor, until the preceding lecture. So this is denoted by the letter epsilon, I, J, K. Turns out to be a much more important object, I would say, than this symbol. And it's a tensor. And this is called the Levi Civita symbol, but of course it should be called the Levi Civita tensor. I'm not, I don't remember what I call it in the book. I think I call it the Levi Civita tensor, I hope. And similarly, the Levi Civita symbol with lower indices is defined as, well, now we'll have to multiply by the square root of z, the permutation symbol, because this permutation symbol is a relative tensor of weight 1. So we have to combine it in a product with the relative tensor of weight negative 1 to end up with a regular tensor. So these two objects are tensors. So beautiful. That's almost all there is to it. Except I will show you a few relationships that these satisfy. And the thing to realize right away, even though we'll talk about it a little bit later, is that it's these objects that are used to define the vector product, and the curl. So vector curl, so the vector product and curl is something that have to do with determinants. It's evaluated by some procedure similar to evaluating determinants in Cartesian coordinates. All of that is iffy, but obviously there is some relationship. So, and of course these objects would be no good at defining anything geometric not particularly good at defining objects that are geometric because they're not tensors and tensors don't non-tensors don't lead to invariants these objects are full tensors they coincide in values with these objects in Cartesian coordinates but being tensors of course they're perfectly suitable for geometrically meaningful and physically meaningful definitions so the vector product and the curl all depend on the Levi Civita tensor. Okay, we discovered that the permutation symbols are not related by index juggling. That was disappointing, but I said because they're not used much, why are they not used much? Because these guys are used much. That, so it wasn't a big deal. So but it would be a big deal if these objects were not related by index juggling. So let's find out if they are. They are. So here is a simple proof. If I were to take the Levi Civita symbol epsilon i j k and lower lower each of the three indices z i r z j s 
V A T. Now let's do a little bit of the analysis in our in our heads. So this equals the permutation symbol divided by the square root. The permutation symbol combined with these three terms will produce the determinant of the covariant metric tensor times the permutation symbol. The determinant of the covariant metric tensor will cancel with this square root of z, leaving us with the square root of z on top and e r s c. So that's what we would get. And of course, that is epsilon r s t. So there you go. The Lebesgue tensors are indeed related by index juggle. So when it comes to the Lebesgue tensors, the initial notation is not misleading. Great. Great. All right. So that's number one. Relationship number two is let's combine the two Lebesgue symbols. This is really easy to see. I'll leave it on this side of the board. If we combine epsilon i j k, in other words, multiply it by epsilon r s t. Now let's do a little bit of analysis in our head. Uh, this has a square. This is a permutation symbol with a square root of z on the bottom. This is a permutation system with the square root of z on top. They cancel each other. We just have the two permutation symbols, and they combine to produce the delta symbol, which is a tensor, the delta system, which is a full tensor. So it's a nice relationship. I'll box it. It's not so important because it's obvious, but it's nice. And it's another proof of the fact that this object is a tensor, is if we needed another proof. But here's another proof that the delta symbols, the full delta symbol is a tensor. The rest are obtained from this one by consecutive contractions. So all of them are tensors. Great. And now I just have one more thing to mention about the Levi Civita symbol. And once again, we'll talk about vector products and curls in the future, in the near future, in fact. So the problem, the issue, uh, the property that I would like to mention is the metronilic property. So the question is, what happens when you apply the covariant derivative to a Levi-Civita symbol. So I won't show the demonstration of this property right now, but it's done very carefully in the book. It's not a very elegant proof. It's a proof by example. Well, let me see. Is it worth discussing now? I think we'll skip it right now and then come back to it. Uh, there's one aspect of the proof that's, that's, a, that's a little bit inelegant, but it's not a complicated proof. You can certainly look it up in the book. So this is part of what we call the metronilic property, the fact that the covariant derivative applied to objects related to the metric tensor is zero. It's actually true for all metrics in the Euclidean space. And here is one more, and it also satisfies the natural limit property. And of course, the same is true, easy to show from this, for the levi chivita symbol with upper indices, also subject to the metronym property. So perhaps this should be boxed as well, because that's part of our tensor calculus differentiation table. That's a common. All right, this completes our short introduction to the levi chivita symbols. This does deserve to be discussed in a little greater detail because there is uh, the derivative of this object that's involved. So we'll certainly come back to this. And in the next lecture, we'll talk about the beautiful Foss-Weil theory. Thank you very much.